mixed by Uri. A Netflix Italian comedy film directed by Sidney Sibilia is based on the Fratasio brothers' actual 1990s pirate mixtape enterprise, as Enrico and his brothers Angelo and Pep transform their illegal cassette business into Italy's top-selling label. The story is chronicled in the movie. Their cassettes, marked mixed by Uri, went viral and had a profound cultural impact. However, as their success increases, the finance police's focus on their questionable business strategy also increases. The movie tells the story of a pivotal era in Italian music history while also weaving an interesting plot around the colorful lives of Uri, Pep, and Angelo. Here is everything you need to know about the conclusion of Mixed by Uri if you're interested in learning how this company affects the Fratasio brothers' lives. Spoilers alert! Mixed by Uri plot synopsis. Brothers Uri, Pep, and Angelo live with their father Pasquale who makes a career by selling fake whiskey in a home that is insecure financially. Each sibling chooses a different and independent route as they get older. Uri and Angelo attempt to convert their tiny mixtape commission company into a store that sells counterfeit record cassettes after losing their jobs, though. As a result, they are forced to ask Don Mario for a loan of 8 million lire so they may purchase the tools they need to properly and efficiently record albums. The brothers are easily able to pay off their obligations because to the substantial profit made by their store. Uri makes a pitch for his plan to expand and market the recordings in other cities. Uri and Pep are expanding their business when they encounter a Moroccan Mafia lord and seek the assistance of newly released Angelo. After resolving the Moroccan Mafia issue, Angelo formally joins the company, which expands quickly and eventually becomes the hub of Forcella. The Fratasio brothers outfit their new production facilities with a large staff and labor-intensive equipment. Youth now have easier access to music, and Uri eventually succeeds in realizing his DJ goals by becoming a local celebrity. Soon after, Don Carmine, also known as The Lion, learns about the Fratasio company and makes an attempt to intimidate his way into it. However, the brothers are fortunate because the old family massacres Carmine and his new family gang that same night. However, police captain Rixiardi adds the Fratasios to his radar as he looks into Carmine's death. Police soon raid mixed by Uri record store, but owing to gravity and lack of proof, they are unable to arrest the brothers. In revenge, the brothers treble their production capacity and formalize their company through papers. People begin selling their pirated cassettes as the Fratasio brand expands, which worsens the nation's piracy issue. The Fratasios eventually struck an exclusive arrangement with Milan-based Big Shot Italian manager Arturo Maria Berambani who also provides them with massive quantities of blank cassettes. They also learn about compact discs, a recent development in the audio industry. A few years later, Fratasio's company Mixed by Uri captures 27% of the market and overtakes all other record labels and sales in the nation. In order to combat piracy in Italy, the ministry allots special money, with Rixiardi in command of the division. Fratasio's finds a way to pirate CDs in the meantime. Uri's capacity to record Sanremo Festival cassettes before the originals are even out on the market pushes Rixiardi over the edge at the same moment. As a result, the police begin monitoring Fratasio's phones in an effort to apprehend them. Enrico Fratasio's is jailed alongside his brothers in the same year. Mixed by Uri ending, how did the police catch Enrico Fratasio? Uri and Arturo become good friends after the Fratasio's and Arturo Maria Barambani get into a business alliance. Uri even names Arturo the godfather of Carmen, the daughter of Teresa and Uri. Arturo, though, works in the music distribution sector. As a result, he quickly learns about the pressure record companies applied on Italy's government to solve their widespread problems with piracy. Even though Arturo has always been aware of Fratasio's involvement in piracy, it is isn't until he meets with the institution that he fully comprehends the scope of their business. Arturo consequently becomes anxious. The only provider to the mixed by Uri company is Arturo's business. Arturo becomes anxious as a result of the possibility that he and his crew will be caught in the crossfire. Arturo initially tries to persuade Uri to close down his business. Up until now, piracy in Italy has represented a ridiculous financial opportunity. All three brothers are extremely wealthy since Fratasios is the leader of the pirate industry. Uri is adamant, though, that they aren't doing this for the money. Uri has a deep love for music and is regarded as a tastemaker by his diverse clientele. The small-time criminal activity that surrounds the Fratasios brothers is children. They do not recognize the criminality of their activities because the laws have historically been so weak about such offenses. They are simply producing mixtapes, after all. Their mixtapes, however, directly impact the sales of genuine recordings, depriving artists and companies of their earnings. In the end, Arturo compromises to receive immunity in exchange for knowledge about the Fratasios. Because of his tight personal and professional ties to the Fratasios, Arturo has extensive understanding of their business. The company's lab sites, management, orders, and other details are disclosed to the police by Arturo. Captain Rixiardi arrests the Fratasios after learning about their secret off-book documents, and a trial is held to determine their punishment. What happens to the Fratasio brothers? The night before their trial, Uri, Angelo, and Pep stay in different prison cells. An elderly prisoner approaches Uri while he is dozing off with news from his younger brother Angelo. Uri is informed that Angelo has 30 million lire in cash stashed away at a construction site. 
tennis courts will be erected on top of a cement-covered tennis court location. The brothers will have the opportunity to repurchase the property after the 10-year lease on the tennis courts expires. By doing this, the brothers will not have to worry about money when they are freed from prison even if they are found guilty. Teresa sends Uri a gift the following morning that includes a suit for him to wear to his trial. Before the trial, Uri notices an article in the newspaper that is wrapped around the outfit. Uri reads about the Maastricht Treaty in the article, which was signed by 12 nations, including Italy. The Maastricht Treaty, according to the publication, will replace all of the 12 countries' respective currencies with a single euro. Uri understands that Angelo's strategy won't benefit him or his brothers as a result. The judge asks Uri if he enters a guilty or innocent plea at the beginning of the trial. Uri's attorney has given strong instructions for Uri to refute all allegations and assert his innocence. Uri, however, just affirms his view that he is merely a DJ. Uri enters a guilty plea as a result, and the Fratasios are given a four-year and six-month prison term. Following their conviction, the Italian Copyright and Intellectual Property Protection Organization the Federation Against Music Piracy is established. Uri informs his brothers about the Maastricht Treaty, but Pep and Angelo are hesitant to accept his account. However, when they are released from prison years later, they undoubtedly discover that Angelo's buried 30 million lire are meaningless to them. Uri launches a gift box distribution company after being released from prison and continues to occasionally indulge his passion for DJing. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more.